Hey everyone, it's me, Alyssa, and I'm here with another video. I hope you all are staying safe and sound with this quarantine. Remember to wear your gloves and only go out if you need to, for instance like the groceries or the pharmacy. Stay six feet apart and carry hand sanitizer. Alright, with that PSA out of the way, let's get right into the video. And yeah, I know I'm hella late with this one because I have a lot of things going on, but just before the first weekend of April, we got ourselves some new episodes from our beloved animes, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s and Beyblade Burst Super King. I'll be doing a review on each of those episodes and possibly putting out some theories during the way. Also, I'll be introducing a new anime into this review. It's called Shadowverse. It's a free-to-play mobile game that involves cards. It's like similar to Yu-Gi-Oh, but not quite. But I'll explain it in another video. So, since I'm doing reviews of the first episodes in each series, I was contemplating on whether to make a single video out of all three, or to give each review their own video. And I decided to go with three videos. And also, a spoiler warning is in effect, so watch at your own risk. In this video, we'll be focusing on Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Just to give you a brief summary of the series, it follows the story of Yuga Odo in the city of Goha. In this city, the Seven's citizens are under a strict rule and master duels are performed. However, Yuga doesn't want it. Nah, our boy wants to have fun, so he goes on inventing a new way to duel. Rush duels. Now this is a big update to the current format and I don't want to get into all the details so I'll be linking some videos down below that explains what roast jewels are and how they work. In the first episode, we start off with a huge robot that's operated by Yuga and is apparently operated by Zulisk and he in this huge robot suit starts running up a hill to some mysterious person. Then boom, he hits his head against something. So the kid has his dreams. Fast forward, he's on his dual bike which he invented himself and one of my first faves in the show so far, Gokuro, appears. He's one of my favorites because of the way he acts, he's a bit humorous in that sense, and when all's got to fall, my man's got your back. Just the old penalty and he'll be right there. Next we see the waifu, I mean, uh, sorry, main female character of the series. Roman Kirishima, who by the way had a lot of fun showing up the other day. She's quiet and mysterious, she so she doesn't really act like the other female MCs in the yu gi -Oh! franchise. And I could see why some people like her from the start. People also theorize that Roman's behavior could have something to do with the Goha Corporation, and I can see that. Being part of a band, sort of stalking Yuga, seems fishy. However, I want to say that and maybe he's not connected to the Goha Corporation and just finds Yuga interesting. Anywho, then we meet Luke, who I really like because he has this awesome ability of disengaging devices with just a palm of his hand. And he says that he was like possessed by some demon to um do that kind of ability. However, this could only be done, done twice a day. It might be increased later down the road, or it could be put into good, some good use. Which leads me to my theory about this series. Now I know it's going to be a huge reach, but here's what I think might happen in the series. Like, Yuga seems too optimistic as a protagonist, so I predict that he may go evil or to the dark side in later seasons, and that huge robot we saw in the beginning scenes. Yeah, he's gonna be controlling that huge cannonball to see him go all dark on us. Then Luke comes in, uses his ability to save his rival slash friend. The reason why I predict this is just, it seems like a possible route for someone like Yuga. Like, he reminds me of like Jaden in his confidence and energy, and it's almost inevitable that he would go to the dark side. But that's all I have to say about that theory. Moving on, the big duel occurs in every first episode of a new Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Now this one really shocked me because I was not expecting a big win from Yuka like that. Although he, got, I guess he had to win or else all of Goha City would be screwed if he hadn't. Seeing the elusive blue eyes white dragon against a spellcaster 
was definitely a, a great reference back to the battle city duel between Yugi and Kaiba. That was a great duel, especially with that hard pounding scene to see if Yugi drew the right card to activate his Ace's ability. And ultimately decimating the hologram man and his monster. But hold on, let's talk about this. Can, can we talk about this? Let's talk about the mail. Can we talk about the mail, please, Mac? I'm dying to talk about the mail for you all day, okay? This. This. Just this. I think whoever did this to you should be taken outside, tied down, and made to look at it. Like, I get the ca the designs of the characters and all, and having a spellcaster deck, but why? Why? It's not horrible, but it's not attractive to me in my opinion, but I digress. And not only that, but successfully installing the rush tools for all of Goha City and everyone's dual disc turn transforming into that seven shape model and that door opening for Yuga, presenting them his new road. I actually like this episode and that duel made me like Yuga a little bit. He's just a small kid trying to make a big difference in a very strict city. Which leads me to this. When I read about the series and the concept, it reminded me of one of my favorite um, albums that everyone should be streaming. K212. And now I know this sounds weird, but just bear with me. K212 is a concept album slash film written, directed, and performed by Melanie Martinez. The story behind this album revolves around her character Crybaby entering sleepaway school. Here she talks about serious topics that is rarely ever talked about in mainstream music like body image, eating disorders, bullying, love, etc. Now why am I talking about this? Why did I bring this up in this video about, about Yu-Gi-Oh? Did I do this to sort of promote the album? Maybe, but here's what I'm talking about. This, oh wait, sorry, I, I'm getting a call. In one of the songs, The Principal, Martinez's character calls the principal and calls him out all the wrongdoing he has done and irreversible effects it has on innocent people, including children. Now, I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm here to talk comparisons and connections. I'm here to talk about how this song represents Yuga and the city he lives in. The Goho Corporation is extremely strict, to the point where duels aren't allowed to trade cards with each other and all complicated rules that are in effect to match the duels. Yuga, however, wants to change that, so he represents Crybaby and her classmates as a stand up against a cruel tyrant, and virtuals are a way of him standing up to the oppression. Well, now that's done, my overall review of the episode was that I thought it was entertaining. It's nice to see a duelist that's actually productive and has big dreams that he isn't afraid of accomplishing. I am interested in the next episode where Yuga and Luke face off because then I will see more about the characters battling style and how the rush duels will then come out to the public and as viewed by the public. Anyways, thank you all for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one where I'll be reviewing the first episode of Beyblade the First Burst Super King. And yeah, I got a lot to say about the anime. Stay safe, stay clean, and stay hydrated. See ya!